Welcome back everybody, Kathy Arbor here, and today is Watercolor Tuesday. Hope you're all having a fantastic day. I thought it would be kind of uh, neat to do some uh, watercolor from some of the books that I have. Uh, I don't know about you, but I have a ton of art books in all types of medium, and this is one of the ones I have for watercolor. It's Watercolor With Me. In the Jungle by Dana Fox. And I thought it'd be kind of cool to do some of these in here. Uh, this is actually watercolor paper. So you can actually do the, the uh, watercolor in this book because she has done it all in watercolor. If you don't want to do that, you could always draw these out um, and put it in a book. Uh, Probably, maybe I'll do that. We'll see. Um, and this gives you all of the basics of starting watercolor. So it's a, it's an awesome book. She has, I think, three of them out. Hey, Dot, good to see you. And it gives you the chart of what uh, color she uses for each one. And it's all listed by step and gives you the supplies needed for each one um, and starts off with very simple ones. This is a basic uh, showing how to do different washes, wet into wet, wet into dry. Um, hibiscus is another one, butterflies, these are simpler. And then you get into the Black Panther, Toucan, Kinkaju, never heard of that one. Uh, macaw, papayas, iguanas. That's so cute. Little pandas. So I thought we could do a few of these and see uh, what we can. There's a neat bug. I don't know about you, but I like. Bugs. I don't, I I find them fascinating, and I just like to draw them. <laughs> little elephant. There's a cute little monkey. Eagles, pineapples, frogs, tigers. There's another monkey. He's cute. And there's uh, many different ones. She's got. I don't know if she put it in the back here or not. Uh, she has a number of, I think there's one about the sea and she lives in, in Ontario, Canada. She's awesome. Uh, I think she has one, uh, for in the forest, in the sea, and this is in the, uh, jungle. So I thought we could try some of these. There's a sloth. Everyone likes the sloth. <laughs> hey, Mary. So I thought we could try this. So if you want, if you're looking to start in watercolor, these are very simple, and it's a great step by step. So I thought we could also take a look at this. This is a book I've had for a while now, uh, The Painted Garden, and it's she's just uh, done uh, writings about her garden, and then she did a few of the watercolors. And I just love this book for eye candy, basically. And it gives you ideas, great ideas, for doing your own how to um, place it on your pages. Hey, Kim. And different ways of, of um, compositions, seed packets. I think it's a really neat thing to get is to see how other people do their um, nature journaling or sketch a day, whatever you, you're going to be doing. Get some of these books. Leaves. 
And then she just writes about the day or uh, about the uh, the plant itself. I just thought it was a really pretty book. And that was that one by Mary Wooden. This is uh, that one. Hey, Janet. So I thought, get some inspiration from these two. And really, you, you don't have to look for, if you want inspiration on what to paint. <laughs> You're not looking at, it was a really nice book. <laughs> it's more of a, it's not a um, to-do book. It's, it's just her sketchbook, I guess you could say. So let's do some of these. I think this is really cute. So I thought we could... Do some, um, let's see, could start off, that's kind of a neat butterflies. Let's start off with something simple, butterfly. So everyone can draw a butterfly. So I'm going to actually just put it in my book here. So maybe I'll do a bunch of them on one page and I'll just get a pencil. So. Uh, let's see. I think I'll do it on a bit of an angle. So her butterfly, the wings, doesn't have to be the same size, whatever. They slant down into, it's kind of a triangle shape. A little bit shorter on one, on the these two sides, this is the longest part. And then the other one, the other side kind of has a curve like that. And then your body's in here. It looks like she just put the head down um, in the wing. They're all different. If you really want to get into um, drawing, what they look like, get some references. Um, this one has, try to get the wings as, as even as possible. And then this one curves like that. And then she's got the black part that goes around there. Like that. And then you'll have um, some more veining or whatever you want to call it. Hey, Xandra, we're just going to play out of this book. And if you want to get this book, this is actual watercolor paper. So you don't even have to draw if you want to start out. It's actually watercolor paper. And then it gives you all of these steps, the supplies, the chart of the what color she uses, and then um, tells you exactly how to go about doing it. And you can get this in um, many different, uh, I think she has three books out, could be more now. Um, so this is uh, in the jungle, then there's by the sea, and there's also um, in the forest, I think it is. You have this one? Awesome. Yeah. So I thought, well, let's do some of these. I haven't, how many books do you get? And you look at them, but then you don't do anything. <laughs> you have read them, but you don't work with them. So why not work? So we need a cerulean blue hue, ultramarine, and a lamp black. So let's see. I might have to get some more paint. So um, I have a French ultramarine blue. That'll do. 
And then I have a cobalt blue. They're calling for a cerulean. We could work with the cobalt. And then the lamp black. I have Payne's Gray will do by Windsor and Newton. And I'll just add a little bit of brown to it. Hey, Carol. Good to see you. Okay, so it says, on dry paper, fill in both left and right wings completely with a diluted mix of cerulean blue hue. Before the paint dries, drop in some ultramarine in the inside edges of the butterfly. Okay, so cerulean blue. So we're going to use a cobalt blue. And she says a diluted, so a lot of water is what that means. And fill in with... on both sides. So this is going to be a fairly quick one. Now remember, I'm not using watercolor paper. I just have sketchbook paper. So I do have to work a little bit faster than you would on watercolor. And then I want some dark and we want to put it in here, make it a little darker, let it bleed out a bit. While it's still wet. Let's see, Could probably put a little bit more in there, right in the very edge here, just to darken it a little bit more. There we go. Okay, let paint dry completely using lamp black. Paint the wing tips entirely and let them dry. So we have to dry this first, so I'm going to just use my hair dryer. Kathy, do you also have the wood split? That's the one I'm picking up. No, I don't. I have this is the only one I have right now. I would like to get that one too. I did buy her brushes. She's the one that has those really nice brushes. These. And they're a really good price. You get, I believe, six in a set. And they have really nice points. They're synthetic, but they do hold quite a bit of water. So how's everybody doing? Are you managing to get your sketchbooks out and do a little bit of sketching or painting, collaging? It does help with all the stress that's going around <laughs> for everybody. Okay, I'm going to use a little bit of Payne's Gray, Windsor & Newton, because it's a fairly dark it's a little bit on the blue side though, um, but to make it a little more black, all you have to do is add some um, burnt umber or raw umber, whatever you have. Burnt umber will work. Raw umber is a little bit darker yet, but it makes it more into the black tone to add umber to that um, paint gray. You can also add it 
to um, the ultramarine blue also. So it says to paint the edges. So these here, and it does have dots. Um, paint swift strokes. Okay, so they add the dots later, which is a little easier. Okay, so we want to do th this part is the black. You can use a smaller brush if you ever, if you would like. Um, Or just use the tip. Very simple, simple one to start. You could do it. Um, whatever color you want. You don't have to stick to this color either. You could do it, um, make a bunch of them. I think these would be kind of fun. Maybe we'll do that. We'll make a bunch of them. We'll do this one by the book and then make a bunch other ones. And then you could either cut them out, use them in your book and the center body is also got this color okay and then there's a little bit um going up to the wing tips dry use a diluted mix of cerulean blue hue paint swift strokes into the wings starting from the inside edge and extending out towards the wing tips this will add that streaky appearance and texture okay so cerulean blue it's a lighter blue let's get some more of that Okay, so then starting from the inside and just streak. So it looks streaky, I guess. So, uh, once the paint is dry, fill in the center body. I already did that. Add the same color to the interior edges of the wings. Okay, so a little bit of that black, but diluted. And I'm going to just add a little bit of that just to the inside part of the wing, just to darken that a little bit. Okay, and then, 
Then with the very tip of your brush, do the detailed lines into the wings and add the antenna. So let's make a little bit more of that up. Okay. I'm going to dry it first. Hey, Brenda. Brenda? Okay, then make the details. So it's just got a bit of veining. You can put in what, however much you want. Um, let's see. Very, very, very simple. You could add all kinds of stuff. Do it what it, do it the way you want. Antennas. And then she says to take a white marker and put the dots in. And highlights in the body. So a few little highlights in the body. And dots. So simple, simple. And only three colors. And there you go. And that's that's the first one. So we could make. Oh, let's make a couple more. But, uh, let's do one. Mm, let's see. I'm gonna make funny eyes on mine. I think. The little body. And there's many different sized wings too. I'm just going to put in whatever. And then let's play with some color. So I'm just going to fill in wet, do a wet into wet. So I'm just going to add water in the area that I want to put the paint. And I'm going to only do one side for now. And let's do oh, some red or orange. Let it travel in the water. That's the fun part. Let's put some yellow in there. Yellow is very strong and it usually pushes back other colors. So 
So let's do this one too while that's moving. And I just have a tiny bit on my brush. Some yellow. It's fun to play with it. Even add it in there. And let's see. We put some blue in there. Let's see what it does. In the yellow, it's going to we'll end up with some green. But sometimes that might look cool for a dot. Let it do its thing. And then I think I'm just going to throw this in the center and whatever it does, it does. It goes into the wing, that's fine. It'll darken the area on the wing. Kind of cool. You can always take a damp brush, squeeze it, and then remove some of it if you want. It's easier to remove on watercolor. This is sketchbook paper. So let's dry that. salt on it too that would be kind of cool Okay, and we can take some more of that black, Let's, or we could take a marker too, or a paint marker, or a watercolor brush. Let's take some of those out. Uh, let's see, I've got a dark black here. Use up your supplies. So this is a Zig Clean Color. And then we could get some more. And he's got a furry body. Why not? Give him some fuzz. His eyes a little bigger. Like that. And let's put, I don't know, round circle here on the end of his 
wing. And then maybe he's got uh, Herker. This is when you can play, make up your own species. You could do it with pen too. You don't have to just use um, brushes. It is, it is um, good practice though, I must say. So if you're not comfortable with a uh, brush, give it a go. It's, your, it's in your um, sketchbook. So this is where you play and experiment, try things. I think I'll take this up here and go around. Just make them up. If you want to make them more realistic, then get out some uh, butterfly books or download some pictures and see what you can make up. They're fun. Now I'm going to have to do the same over here. <laughs> so that could be a challenge. Let's see, I started off with this one. And go around like this, I guess. And might not be the same, but let's just play. that. Yeah, it's close. This one here. Like that. And then... Or you could just leave it. You don't have to put all this stuff in. They're your butterflies. You make them however you want. Oh, 
one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay. And then there's this, and this, and this. Uh, pretty close. I think I'll add a little thicker there. have fun with it. Oh, thanks, Joan. They're fun. Nothing crazy or anything, but <laughs> let's put little, a little eyes there. And I think we'll polka dot his body. Why not? may not be able to see that, but we could have a little guy sitting here. Let's not draw it, just put a nice swap of water. I'm going to have this one sitting on with his wings closed. So whatever we get, we get. <laughs> And let's put hmm, aqua or hmm, soft blue. No, we got blue already. Maybe a green and yellow or yeah, the yellow. And some green, have some leaf green here by Da Vinci. Let's see what it does. It's nice and bright. Not showing up a lot on here, but green smidgen of black right in the corner here or blue, Payne's gray, and I'm just going to wet it, let it travel. Let's try it.
let's make the body. So the body could be, hmm, I guess, that color. That um, paints gray by Windsor and Newton. And let's see, that will be this. We'll do a side profile of them. So head. And part of the body will show in here. Like that. And then let's put a marker out. They have six legs, so now probably won't be able to see the all the the leg, but we'll put I think they They're from the same area, I think. I could be wrong. Don't quote me on it. And then we'll just do, maybe he's raised up a little bit. So we'll see the other feet. And they have these little barbs on their toes or whatever they are. <laughs> <laughs> and then this little taster like that and like that and I think Let's do a few lines. Not many, though. A little white mark for highlight on his eyeball. And simple. They're not <laughs> realistic, but they're cute. Kind of like blobs. You know when you do blobs and then you make a face out of them? Kind of like that. Okay. So let's, what's, uh, let's see what else what other one do we want to do here macaw that's pretty so we have to draw it so I guess I can do it this way, so you guys can see. So if you put a oval, and then the head here is almost an egg shape. So it's above. And it's kind of like the big part of the egg there and then the smaller part up there like that then from there you can attach them like that this one can go up a little bit there and then the beak is part of this egg shape 
but it comes past like that. And that's the white part. And then there's a brown or black part here that attaches to it. And then it kind of looks like um, comes over like this. I have an eraser. I keep forgetting to bring my eraser down. And I don't know where all they all of them are. So I can erase that now. And this here can be erased. And then the wing is um, this wing here. It's just kind of like a, a, a skinny half circle. And bring it down to about there and then his little toes are curled I think he's hard to tell what he's standing on but he's got long nails and it's just like a C or a crescent moon And then these toes, there's two. That's just like a sausage with a nail. And then the other one's a little bit longer with a nail. Like that. And then you can erase the any of the lines that go through it. I'm just going to make it a little bit lighter so it's not so prevalent as far as when I paint it. And then there's um, kind of a, I don't know if it's a rock or almost looks like a rock that he's sitting on. And then his other wing is kind of in here. So it kind of goes like this. And the marking on his face, it's kind of a circle that attaches to that beak area. And then his eyeball is right about there. Um, yeah, that's not bad. A little bit fuzz on the top. There. So we have a alizarin crimson hue, gamboge hue, ultramarine, lamp black, and burnt umber. Okay. Now she uses a number two detailed brush. So let's see, this is a number four. I'll use that one. You could, if you have a two, you can use a two. Um, so just the alizarin crimson. So let's see, what do I have? We do have alizarin crimson is this one. Beautiful red. So it says um, paint the body with a lizard and crimson avoiding the wings. So, so most of the start of this book is with um, 
wet into dry painting. As you go into it further, there's uh, wet into wet. And um, I think she does use a bit of salt in here too. Not sure though. So let's paint this up. And avoid the wings. Very simple beginner painting. <laughs> Thanks, Todd. These would be cute cut out and used in your planners or on uh, junk journals, whatever. Make them in different colors. Once you start doing these, try and do more of the same thing, but in different colors. It's, it's a great way of learning how to um, make colors too. Try combining colors, see what you get or using the color you're like this red you could try it in a lighter form so less pigment more water uh, while the area is wet touch with gamboge no i don't have a gamboge here but i will use a uh, yellow ochre it's very similar And right around the head, use that color. Just throw some of that in there. And let it bleed out. Um, Lizard and crimson on the top part of the wing. And it comes down like that. And then we have the gamboge again. I'm going to put a little Indian yellow with that. And that goes on while it's wet. So if it bleeds in, that's fine. Bring that down. And while that's still wet, we want to put some ultramarine blue in and just sweep it up and that'll turn it into a greenish color. So we don't want to paint all of it to cover the gamboge, but we do want some of it. A little darker down on the bottom, like so. Along the uh, body can be a little darker. And then we do the same thing on the other side. So there's more of the gamboge showing on the outer side instead of the red. So 
So I'm just going to paint the whole thing that's gamboge color. And then I'll put the blue back over top in certain areas. And then a little bit of red also. So we have some back going down here. Well, it's wet. Just streak it because it's feathers. Let it do its thing. A little darker along the body part. And then a little bit of that alizarin crimson. Just a smidgen in the yellow and it'll turn it up kind of just on the top here. I'll turn it a little bit on the um, orangey side. And then I'm going to put a little bit more right here because it'd be a little bit uh, shadowed. Looks like that's what she's done. And then along the bottom and the wing. Like that. I think I'm going to lift that just a bit so I can put a little bit more of that gamboge in there. I'm not seeing it a lot there. That's better. Pushes that red away. I'll show you in a minute. And then the, that um, lamp black color. So that was the ultramarine. Or no, it was the um, umber color with a little bit of that Payne's gray. And this goes on the bottom here of his beak. And then just lighten it a little bit with some water. And then the other part is just a little bit lighter. This part here. Just a smidgen lighter. And then there's a little bit on the tip of his beak here. Like that. And then there's kind of polka dots on his face, like around this area. So you can just, actually, I think I'll just wet that area. And then throw some dots on it. Oh, I kind of like that. That gamboge seeped in. Kind of pretty, actually. I'll leave it like that and then polka dots like that we can go back in and put more on later uh, maybe a few in here dry brushed a little bit and his eyeball I'll wait till that dries, but his feet can be that color too, that grayish color. So his little toes. And then we can uh, use a pen and put the lines in on the toe. That. And then this here is kind of a sienna color. So let's see, burnt umber is what I think they're using. So let's use some of this. This is burnt sienna instead. 
actual work. And I'm just going to drag my brush a little darker on the top, around the feet. Here. Make a little bit more thicker paint, and then you can go right under here. Damp brush. Take that out a little bit. Uh, and let's dry it and then we can do a bit of, of pen work. We can put the eyeball in. It's kind of like a crescent moon. And then um, we can add some more of those dots. Kind of has these uh, marks on their skin. And add a little bit of detail on the beak. And his nails. Is, um, their nails are kind of big, black. Let's see that one. And then this one. Like that. Then you can also add a few um, feather lines if you want, like just sketchy. I'm adding to this. She didn't do this, but do what you want. Um, when I get books, I usually I'll try her stuff or their stuff, and then I always add my little bit of whatever to it. <laughs> it's just how I roll. He's a little, I can see some of the um, different uh, washes of this color. So maybe I'll take advantage of that. And draw around it.
Why not? I want to add a little bit more detail. Go ahead. These books are our starting off point. Let's see. Little um, lines in the feet. You can either do that with um, pen or you can do paint. I like the stripes. Like that. And then the rock can also have some, at least that's what I think it is, is a rock, but it could be something else. So little jagged areas follow the line of the And then I'm going to add a little bit more um, shading with that Payne's Gray mix. Just under, let's see, just under here. Needs a little bit. Right in there. And right in here. And then we can put uh, a bit in here, I think. Just down here where it would be darker. Put some streaks or along the edge of his body where the wing would be overlapping, would be a little bit darker. Maybe Right in here, a little a little bit darker, shadowed. And then a highlight on his eye. Thanks, Joan. They're fun. It's um, a quick, I'm gonna put highlights on his toes. Just a few in the kind of center. And a bit on his beak. Be shiny. That. There. So there's the little macaw. So they're fun to do. So give them a try. You can make them too. Try them with this color and then try them again with another color. Um, and that gives you a starting off point, a jumping point to getting confident in yourself and doing it. And then once you, you know, you feel proud about what you did, then you'll venture on to something a little bit uh, more difficult, maybe. Do what you want to do. Um, don't hold yourself back. Just play, play and have some fun with it. That's all. Let's see, what else can we do with this? Mm. Looking to see what I have here on my desk. So we could put, use these. I have stamps. Why not? Macaw. So M. I think I have a ink pad somewhere. 
am a C and W. And we'll get some ink. Do it in gray, I guess. these in a while. W. Here we go. These back. So it doesn't have to be pretty. This is a my sketchbook, so it's for playing. Now see, this is starting to rip here. This is the only thing I do not like about this book is the pages in this book is very, if it gets wet in the ditch, not good. Hey, Christopher. Yeah, it's good to see you. <laughs> Hope you're able to get some creating done. Get your sketchbook out. Have some fun. Okay, we got enough time to be doing another one. Let's try another one. How about... Monkeys. Let's do a bug. I like bugs. Bugs are easy to. It's a simple one. So rounded. Head. So and the legs are both there so they're like a and then looks like one two three triangles in a foot 
So kind of like and then a foot. And then that one goes about here. So a circle and then round like that and then that sectioned. So that one will be the same. So skinny. And then it gets a little bit thicker. And then another skinny. And then thicker. Uh, and then those upside down triangles. And the foot. Like that. And then I guess this is part of the foot too here, I think. I think they have six legs. Most of them. Like that. I guess this one should be bigger. So it's not lopsided. And then the little antennae. Bye Z, thanks for coming. All right, let's see what only one side of the back of the beetle to begin. Drop on damp paper, add cerulean blue hue in the outside edges and allow it to move towards the center. While the color is still wet, add the gamboge hue to the center and allow it to mix with the blue shade to create the green. Ah, okay, I'm going to use my bigger brush. So one side at a time. So, okay, we'll wet it. What this is, got something on there. Okay, and then it's really in blue. On the outer edge, it allowed it to move. Okay, here we go. And then the gamboge. Into well go to the center and allow it to mix. Okay. Cool. this one. Let's 
So it's cerulean blue. And on the bottom or the side edge, the outside edge. And then the gamboge on the center. And let it mix. Um, green. Add a little extra green to the yellow areas using sap green. Finally, use ultramarine around the outer edge. Okay. So, sap green. I guess I'll I'm going to use the leaf green. Um, to the yellow areas. Okay. Okay, and then ultramarine around the outside edge to darken the blue. I think I need to sop up a little bit here. A little bit puddling. Don't want puddles. All right, so now some darker blue around the outside edge. It says. Now remember, I'm not using watercolor paper, so when you're using it on your watercolor paper, it will run in more to get a better effect. Okay. And then the same done on the head. So, cerulean on the head. And then the gamboge again on the center. That's so cool. I love how it just makes it move. And then a little bit of the ultramarine. Well, that's pretty intense there. Let's see. I'm going to sop some of that up. It's puddling. A little bit of the ultramarine around the edge. Again. Like that. I think I'm going to put a little bit there too while it's still wet. Right. Uh, fill the head area. Okay, I already did that. Paint the antenna arms, legs with sap green. Dot with some ultramarine. Okay, so sap green. I'm going to use this leaf green. So that's what I got.
just dot it basically because these are small areas. It doesn't matter how advanced you are. When you get a book, there's always something new in that book you haven't done before. So keep an open mind when you're doing these books. Sometimes it's just nice to ref get a refresher too. And the antennas are green too. Ah, and then a little bit of ultramarine in dotted, it said, here and there. Just dot a little bit here and there. And then, what does it say? Ultramarine, let dry. Use a white pen. Start stippling on the highlights on the back of the beetle. The whitest parts should contain more dots, more um, dense dots, allowing them to trail off to separ separate more as the highlight becomes less intense. Okay, so let's dry it. All right, now we can take a white pen. I've got a graph ink here. Or if you have one of those, um, what are they called? I think I have one here somewhere. Jelly rolls would work. These. how this one yeah should work okay so more dots along the um is this gonna work i don't know if it's gonna oh there more intense where the the shine is where the main part of the shiny area is you would have more dots concentrated in those areas. And then as you um, move out from that, they become less, um, more solitaire, so that they're separated. What I mean, and they have these Let's 
separate dots on the head. But here, just above the head or below the head, there's an, a little area, kind of like looks like eyebrow, <laughs> that's concentrated with, and then down. Part of the shell by the center. And then right here, there's a lot of dots close together. As you go down, they get further apart. more some in here a lot right here some more concentrated just dot 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 do the Posca too if you if you have Posca you could use that too whatever you have try and do dots though don't do a tick um, it's stippling that's what you want to be doing Stippling is a definite dot. I need more in here a little bit. Concentrate it. Now these tend to soak up the paint. So you might have to go back and add some more on top. Because the watercolor kind of... Um, soaks up into this ink. So it would depend on uh, what kind of marker you're using. Okay, and then on the legs too, you some or this is the other leg kind of looks like an antenna but it's not
few on here, not many, a few. That and a few lines in here showing. Okay, and then some black. I'm just going to take my Sharpie. There's a line right in here separating the, sh the wings and it just slides down there. You don't have to put a lot, but just a bit kind of scratched out. And where else? And under these little ticks on the, on the just a, a little mark under each one of those um, white marks, just put a little mark of black under there. So a dot under the dot. <laughs> like that. And I think that's it. Now. Yeah. We'll just put a little bit maybe in there under his arm. To get a little more noticeable. Why not? Like that. There. So there's the bug. <laughs> A little beetle. <laughs> he's got his eye on him. That's what he's looking at. Ooh, there's next week's dinner. <laughs> Just these are great to just experiment. See how colors blend with each other. They're a lot of fun, actually. I like doing them. It's a great way to uh, fill up a page. Now I can put, oh, let's see. I'll put it in pencil first. This is a jewel beetle. And then you could write about it. If you want to look it up in the dictionary, I wish people understood that they shouldn't drop by when I'm painting. <laughs> now I have to go back and do this later. <laughs> Isn't that always a way? Yep. <laughs> I'm going to outline this on one side so it kind of looks like um it's shadowed
kind of looks old then. See? Just outline it a little bit. And we can you could just leave them like that, or you could write about them. Um, I got my papers in here. I don't know, but this one here. Why don't we put? Let's see, I used um, pyro orange. And this one was hence a yellow. And I think I put cerulean blue on, and that made the green like that. And this one here was ultramarine. With... Cobalt. And Payne's gray and a little bit of umber to make the black. And this one here was Henza yellow and leaf green. And that color. So now I can put in, just for the fun of it, just to fill her in. I'm going to dry it so I don't drag my sleeve through it. was ultramarine. Um, cobalt blue. James Gray. And Burnt Umber. This was Pyro orange. And hen's a yellow. And that one was cobalt blue.
cobalt. And that was Payne's Gray. Kenzie Yellow. And what was that? Leaf Green. Then I have a list of what I used in there. You could do that with all of them if you want. It just gives a little extra look at this guy is bored and thinks that Robert and I are his freaking hobby. He's nice, but for Pete's sake, give it a break. <laughs> I know those, I know those types of people. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to put some, that's cute. So if you just want to, you know, find something to fill your sketchbook, experiment, you could write about it. You could make a little window here if you wanted to, or add a piece of paper to it if you don't want to write on this. There's many, many ways of going about filling your sketchbook. Um... Could actually do some splatters. Why not? That extra paint here. Why not? Throw some splatters on. Bright green here. Put some. There, try it. Here. Could have put gold on there too. Just mm. play. And it's interesting. I like that. just this kind of goes together now because of the splats. So I could do this actually in stamping 
too if I wanted to. It's kind of big though. I have to use smaller letters. Oh, I don't think I have them here. Well, I'm not going to put you through that. <laughs> Me finding it. All right, so that was that. So something quick. Um, or, like I said, you can find a book and try something out of these books. It's fun. Those are cute little birds. They're quick. You could also use these books, too. There's no reason why you can't use these for watercolor also. So get your, you know, if you have a bunch of, of these um, decorative painting books, try them in watercolor or oil painting books, whatever you have. Um, we'll continue on Thursday. Uh, we started a painting, but I didn't get it finished because it's more detail. This is where we are so far, and we'll finish that um, on Thursday and do a lot of um, detailed work and put the birds in. And I'm thinking of doing something like a frame around it, too. So we'll see about getting that done. And uh, other than that, I hope you have a fantastic uh, rest of the week. And I hope you have time to get your sketchbooks out and just play, experiment, and have fun. So I'll let you guys go. And um, don't forget to stay creative and stay safe. And we'll see you on Thursday. Take care.